as I think you would. School. I have fever. Oh, I have something to give you back. Um, actually, this is for you. Thank you. What is this? One, two, three. Let's see. Catch it? What's the girl's name? I think so cringe. <laughs> no, if you really call I think it's good name, alright. Just for this video, it's a bit. <laughs> alright, but is this your relationship goes to? How many of you here? You like, oh, so sweet. Next time, buy color pencil for the guy, the girl I like, right? It must buy what brand? Very good. Okay. So for those who are new here, we are in a four-part sermon series called Relationship Goals. And what is relationship goal? Now, I believe we do see this term in a social media, hashtag relationship. Go just type it and you'll see a lot of couples' photos on it. But what does it exactly mean, right? See, relationship goal means that there must be a goal of what we want to see in a relationship. Get it? All right? And I'm not just talking about boy-girl relationship, but your relationship with your family, with your friends, with your cell, your cell leaders, the people you connect with, the people you love, what is your goal in this relationship? What is your end in mind in this relationship? And I believe most of us here, what we hope to see in every relationship is one that is healthy. Where we can communicate with one another, be patient with one another, love one another, respect one another, and care for one another. You see, healthy relationship makes life more enjoyable, perhaps more than anything else. Even if your health isn't the best, even if you, have not, you don't have a lot of money, if you have a loving relationship, you can enjoy life. You know, someone once said, a poor man with a loving family and good friends is far richer than a rich man who is poor relationally. You see, no one wants their relationship to end up being broken, being dysfunctional. Yet sadly, we see a lot of brokenness in these days in the relationship between friends couples and even families. I mean, just recently, there was an article of this monster dad in Singapore. You heard about it? You saw the article? A 27-year-old father was sentenced to 25 and a half years jail and a maximum of 24 strokes of the cane on Tuesday, 19 Feb, because he's been prostituting his wife to get money and even performed sexual acts on their six-year-old daughter, a 13-year-old niece in a hotel room. What kind of messed up relationship is this? But today I want to tell you, I want to share with you that there is hope despite the brokenness we see. There is hope in having healthy relationship when we choose to follow God because this is what God originally created. You see, in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, He said everything was good except one thing that was not good. In Genesis 2 verse 18 it says this, the Lord God say, it's not good for man to be Alone, I will make a helper suitable for him. See, God never once wanted us to be lonely, to be abandoned, to be abused, to be an orphan. No, never. And that's why he chose to have a relationship with us. And when God created the first man, Adam, what did he do with him? He walked with him. He talked with him. And he didn't just leave them there with the plants and animals. No, he created Eve so that Adam didn't just have a relationship with men, but with a woman, right? 
And if you look through the Bible, we see a God that is always for healthy relationships, that rank healthy relationships as the highest. You see, in Matthew 22, verse 36, when the Jewish leader asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus didn't say, don't steal, don't lie, don't do this, no. What he replied, he says this, love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like this, love your neighbor as yourself. It's all about having a healthy relationship with God and with others. Thus, when we choose to follow after Him, when we receive His love in our lives, we are able to build healthy relationship with the people around us. You know, 1 John 4, 19 says this, We love because He first loved us. We love because He first loved us. We are able to love, we are able to build healthy relationship because we have a God that first loved us, that first forgive us, that first demonstrate what unconditional and sacrificial love is, and thus we are able to love like He does. Church, hear this. We should be a walking advertisement of what a healthy relationship is. I repeat again. We should be a walking advertisement of what a healthy relationship is. Not Netflix, not your Hollywood shows, no. All right, because if God is love and we have God in our life, therefore we can love like God. Amen? And that's why today I want to share with you from the Bible the ABCs on how to have healthy relationships. And I encourage you to take notes. And trust me, when you follow it, you're going to be a husband material, a wife material, whatever is it. And you see a lot of, you see, a lot of times when you think that, wow, I think I must try a few girls first, try a few guys, get into a relationship. Then I can become an improved version of to be a, a boyfriend, a girlfriend. No, it's not true. It starts from you having a healthy relationship with your family, with your friends, with the community here, so that you can be a better man and a better woman. Tell the person next, tell the person next to you, if it's a guy, say you're going to be a better man. If it's a girl beside you, say you're going to be a better woman. Come, let's pray. Let's close our eyes and our, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you, Lord, for your everlasting love. Lord, we pray this day for your presence to continue to be here and speak to us, Lord. And we declare that each one of us here, we will rise up to love like how you love because you first love us. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, what are the ABCs of a healthy relationship? A, the first one, A, stands for appreciate each other's differences. Appreciate each other's differences. You see, a healthy relationship begins when we choose to appreciate each other's differences. To appreciate means to understand, to accept. See, all of us here, we are created differently, right? The way we look, the way we think, the way we behave, we are all different. Even identical twins have different personality and thumbprints. Yet the way God created us is never meant to distance us with our differences, but to unite us. That's why He gave us different skills, strengths, thinking patterns to help us recognize and appreciate the need for one another and to appreciate our own uniqueness. You see, your weaknesses can be someone's strength and together we become better. And that's why Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9 says, two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. And as we begin to understand and accept each other's differences, we're able to love the way that they will feel loved. We're able to communicate better and respect one another better. How many of you have heard about the five love language before? Yes? Yes? All right. It talks about how it helps people to see how people receive love and give love differently. For example, some of us here, we feel love when someone hug us. How many of you here? Yes to you. When someone hug you, yeah? Okay, you're falling a physical touch, all right? Hug, kiss, and all this. Okay, this, 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 is how you ex this is how you receive love. Okay, this is like number, number five in my list. Don't ever hug me, all right? Okay. <laughs> the second one, how do we receive love? Number two. Some of us, we receive love through words of affirmation, where people speak words to encourage us. You. People write letters to you. You feel loved, all right? This is how you receive love. Some of us here, we receive love through quality time, and people spend time with you, ask you out despite their business, they ask you out all right, to spend time with you. You feel loved. Some of us here, we feel love when someone helps us buy 
dinner, breakfast, and lunch. It's called acts of service, all right? Help us do things. We feel very loved. Can we do my homework? Can. Ooh, I feel loved. Okay, yeah. All right, lastly, some of us say we feel love when people buy gifts, not just during your birthday, but each time they see this thing, they remind of you and they buy for you. You feel love. You feel important. You understand? So a lot of us here, the way we receive and give love is very different. So I encourage you as a cell, if you can, go and do the five love language so they can get to know one another better, all right? You see, yet many times, even though we know we are different, many times instead of appreciating our differences, we assume that we are the same in our personality, in the way we think, in the way we do things, and tells we put unrealistic expectation on others, assuming that they will see things or do things our way, they can read our minds, they can feel how we feel, and when they don't do it, we get frustrated with them, thinking that they are weird, immature, not understanding, slow, or they just don't love us. For example, can I ask you, do guys and girls behave differently? <laughs> Alright, some say yes, some say no. Do guys and girls think the same? No. Uh. <laughs> yeah, correct, yeah, no, correct, yes. Uh. I mean, have you ever heard of couples fighting over the different ways to push up a toothpaste? Yes, huh? All right. For example, I'll show you this diagram, all right? Usually, okay, guys, guess how they push a toothpaste? Which one? First one, second one, third one? Third one, some first one. Ladies, how do you push up your toothpaste? First one, second one, you don't really care, right? Some, right, correct? All right. So because of these differences, couples do quarrel over it. You know, I know of a couple, they will have two toothpaste in their toilet so that they cannot quarrel over such things, all right, okay? You take yours, you take mine, I take, I take mine. Because I cannot stand it when you anyhow push your toothpaste, all right? So you see, the way we behave as girls and guys, we are different, all right? We are different. But yet sometimes, as mentioned just now, we assume that we are the same. We assume all of us here, we are the same. Because we place unnecessary expectation on them. I'll give you another example. I don't know whether girls can relate, all right? You know, you all know who's my husband? Very good. <laughs> so for example, when I share my problems with Jasper, all right? I'm not expecting a solution because I already know what is right and what is wrong. I know already, I know already, okay? But what do I need? I just need a listening ear. I just want to air it out. Once I air it out, I'll be okay already, all right? Just, let, just listen, all right? all right? But instead of listening, he will tell me what to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that frustrates me because I know I think I'm stupid. Ah. <laughs> all right, I mean, this one. All right. And that frustrates me even more. It's like, why do you think this way? Why can't you just listen, right? But you see, to him, when he shares problems, he wants solution. And that's why he will do the same for me. So I assume, right? I assume that he will listen instead. Thus, I put unrealistic assumption, unrealistic expectation on him. You get it? From then on, I learn, okay? I'll just tell him, hey, can listen. i just share with you, okay? And then he knows already. Okay, sometimes we think that the guys know, no. You must tell them one, all right? Okay, then they will know, okay? So from there, I begin to tell them so that he will know, okay? So that I don't anyhow put unrealistic expectation on him. Or some of us here, we make sweeping statements regarding the different gender, assuming that all guys are like that one. All girls are like that one. And right now, I'm going to do a mini activity with you. You all got a handphone? Can we just dim the light for a while? You all got a handphone, right? Okay, can you all on your torchlight? Okay, just on your torchlight. All right. Okay, wow, nice. Everyone's on your torch. Very good. Now, I'm going to ask you some questions regarding sweeping statements. All right, all of you just on for a while. Sweeping statements being made of different gender, okay? And if you think it's true, I want you to be as honest as possible. Don't give politically correct answer, okay? What you based on what you believe. If you think it's true, you own it. If you think it's not true, it's false, you off it. Can you understand? Yes, yes. Okay, so for example, example, first one. Be honest, huh? Okay, all of us, all of us. Is it true that girls are more sensitive than guys? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, very bright. Huh? <laughs> Second one, is it true that guys care more about their hair than girls? 
<laughs> all right, I see Asher high up there, all right? <laughs> Is it true that girls gossip more than guys? <laughs> hey, you all never see guys gossip before. More they allow, I tell you. <laughs> Is it true that girls are more demanding than guys? <laughs> Is it true that girls are more indecisive than guys? When, they say, when guys say anything, it means anything. When girls say anything, it means got something. Agree, yes or no? Okay, next one. Is it true that guys are more fun than girls? Sorry, I like to deny that. No, yeah! <laughs> Is it true girls are more needy than guys? All those sifting your spouse, all don't have to raise up. <laughs> Next one. Is it true that guys are smarter than girls? Very good. All don't have to put up, right? <laughs> Is it true girls are more petty than guys? <laughs> okay, not all agree, all right? Last one. Is it true that guys cannot cry? Why is it still a touch light? <laughs> Alright, can you just have the house light on? Thank you so much for being honest in your sharing. Let's put aside how we feel right now. Let's not have gender riots here, alright? But why I bring this up, is so these are sweeping statements being made, being assumed by people that has caused many unnecessary conflicts or tension between people. Instead of understanding them as an individual, we assume that they are like that one. All girls are needy and all guys are smelly, right? Giving us no room to better understand them as an individual. You know, I remember last time, this, this, I, also, I'm, I, I also had that, okay? I always believe that girls are more sensitive and guys are not sensitive one, all right? So that means that I can be very direct with them. They won't be hurt one, okay? Till I met a guy that is sensitive. I didn't know, but because I assume, okay, I, get, I begin to give him some feedbacks. And after that, he began to cry. And not just that, he sent me a long whole text of why he was not happy with what I say. I was like, what law? Can you man up or not? I mean, I didn't say that, I didn't reply that, okay? But in my mind, I was like, can you just man up? Why? I just say only, why must you cry and do all that thing, okay? But yet, when I began to reflect, it was my fault to assume this way. Is it okay for guys to be sensitive? Yes or no? Yes. What's wrong with it? Am I right? It was me that assumed that guys shouldn't be sensitive and girls should be sensitive, all right? You see, when we assume that people think like us, people act like us, when we assume that girls are like, like that, guys are like that, it will cause relationship to be broken instead of healthy. As we put unrealistic expectation on one another, not making effort to understand each other as an individual, causing a breakdown in relationship. Whether it's among families, friends, spouse, the people we love. That's what it is saying that says, assume, make an out of you and me. Can you see the spelling, assume? When we start, start to assume, it really brings a lot of conflicts between you and me. You understand what I'm saying? Just never, ever assume that this person is like this. Instead, learn to appreciate each other's differences so that you can love the way they receive love and this will bring about healthy relationship. I mean, we see this in Jesus too. You guys know who's Mary and Martha? Yeah? Who are they? Mary and Martha. Are they, are they siblings? Yes, all right. So despite Mary and Martha being sisters, their personality are different one, all right? The way they show love and receive love, receive love is also different. Mary is more a relational person and that's why when Jesus came by to visit them, Mary would set aside time to spend time with Jesus. But for Martha, the way he, she expressed love is by doing things for people. And that's why when Jesus came, instead of sitting at Jesus' feet, what was she doing? She was cooking, making sure everything was nice. Because she believed that this is the best way to express love. And that is why she was so pissed off with Mary. Like, what are you doing, man? Just sitting there talking. Hey, this is the best way to show love. By cooking, man. This is the best way, all right? Okay? So this is her. She's more task-oriented. Okay? But you know when their brother, Lazarus, passed on, 
we see in John 11, the way Jesus comforted both of them were different. The way Jesus cared for them were different because He knew both of them received love differently. For Martha, being a task-oriented person, He told Martha what He was going to do. He says this, Your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, He will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never ever die. Do you believe this, Martha? So Jesus told Martha what he was going to do because she was more task-oriented. That's how he expressed love to Martha. But for Mary, it's very different. He didn't go, hey, Mary, don't worry, don't cry. Lah. Look, he will confirm rise again. No, all right? Instead, when, he, when Jesus saw Mary crying, weeping, what did he do? In John 11, verse 35, it says, Jesus wept. Because he, he knows that Mary is a more relational person. And through that, I believe both of them, both Martha and Mary, know that Jesus loved them. Because Jesus showed them, He loved them through the different ways of it. Alright? Similarly, if we want to build healthy relationship, we need to learn to appreciate each other's differences. Take time to understand and to accept one another so that you can love them better, you can communicate with them better. Don't leave them out because they are different from you or they don't think or behave like you. You know, I was reminded of this video that I saw that sums up what it means to appreciate each other's differences. Let's watch this video, right? Very cute one. So this life is given everyone a present Beautiful, shiny and new Everyone but you Golden ribbons, diamonds Line everyone's path that leads to wide open doors Everyone's but yours Wide open doors Hold on Keep on Even when the road seems very long Ooh. Open your eyes Even So cute, right? You know, the other animals could have distanced themselves from him due to him being different, from him having spikes all over that have physically hurt others. But instead of giving up on him, they choose to appreciate the differences and came up with ideas so that they can come close to him. Will we do the same too? Are there people in our lives that we find hard to love, to communicate because they're different from us, from our personality or wavelength even? Today, what are some things you can better understand and draw closer to this person? It could be your parents, your siblings, your cell brothers, your leaders here and there. Today, will you say, God, teach me, Lord, to learn to appreciate them despite their differences so that I can establish healthy relationship with the people around me. So what are the ABCs of a healthy relationship? Number one, A, appreciate each other's differences. B, become more Christ-like. Become more Christ-like. You know, in 2010, a couple by the name of Mr. Francis Ng and Madam Joyce Tan lost their only son, 19 years old Darren, in a downtown East Gang fight. How many of you remember this? All right. Their son was hacked to death in one of the most vicious gang attacks here in recent years. There was so much sadness and when they lost their son and anger grew in Mrs. Francis Ng when a group of tattooed youth came to pay their respect to their dead friend as he believed they were partly to blame. Yet it was through the love of Christ that brought them to a point of forgiveness towards his son's friend and also gave them greater compassion towards troubled youths. 
It's a picture of the couple, and behind are the friends. They begin to open their house to Darren's friends to hang out, to listen to their problems, and they even organize a golf tournament on 18 July 24 to raise funds for troubled young people. Mr. Francis Ng said, I've already lost my son, and I didn't want other parents to lose theirs. And Madam Joyce Tan added, saying, They're still so young and have many challenges ahead of them. I've come to love them like I love my son. I mean, when I read this, what kind of love is this? That despite the pain they went through, they release forgiveness to the people that have taken away their precious son and provide shelter and hope for them. Indeed, they display what it means to be more Christ-like. They could have just dwelled in their emotions, their pain and their anger, yet they choose to put aside and do what Jesus will do to love, to forgive and to be compassionate. And that's why Apostle Paul wrote in Colossians 3, Verse 12 onwards says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you and all over these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And he said this to encourage his people to exhibit these qualities of Christ, to grow in these qualities such as compassion, kindness, and humility, patience, forgiveness towards others, so they can truly love one another and they can build healthy relationships. Yet honestly, are these qualities easy to grow in? Ask yourself this, because I know it's not easy. Because oftentimes, we get hurt by others instead. We get rejected, betrayed, or we just feel so unjustified that we focus so much on how we feel, on how people treat us, instead causing us to be easily triggered, to be salty, all right? You see, God has caused us to be salt and light, right? But oftentimes, we are salty, all right? I got this member always say, salty, yeah, they late again, salty, man, always like that. Everything salty, 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 all right? I mean, sometimes some of you may think, why must I be nice to someone when they're not nice to me? Why must I forgive when they hate me so much, when they've taken away the things that are precious to me, when they betray me? Why must I speak nicely to them? They're already shouting at the top of a voice. Why, right? But you know, in Genesis 1, verse 27, it says this. So God created mankind in His own image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. See, to make in the image of God doesn't mean we look exactly like God, no, right? But we have the characteristic of who God is. And in 1 John 4, it says that God is love. That means we are able to love like how He loves. But because of sin has come into our lives, we become more of ourselves, full of ourselves, and less of Christ. That we can't establish healthy relationship with others. I mean, we see this happening right at the beginning where sin destroys the relationship of both man and God and man to man. We see how Adam and Eve hide from God because they were guilty and ashamed. There was a barrier in their relationship and there was no freedom to come to God. We see how Adam and Eve begin to be in conflict with one another, blaming one another on why they eat the fruit, which God told them not to when God confronted them. And ever since then, we see sibling rivalry began in Cain and Abel, families destroyed, adultery happening, and we still see in today's world of how broken relationships are because of sin in our lives. See, sin caused us to focus a lot about ourselves and less of others. But because of what Christ has done on the cross, when we choose to become more like Christ, we can put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to earthly nature, whether it's sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry, and put aside all anger, wrath, slander, beauty, speech, and lying. And we can put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing one another, forgiving each other as sin in Colossians 3. And this will bring about a healthy relationship when we choose to do that. So right now, I want you to look through all these qualities. You can do it during cell group. Is it compassion, kindness, Humility, gentleness, patience, and forgiving. Is there one quality that you know that you can work on for this season? Just one, all right? And will you write it on a paper and pray? For example, Lord, 
Teach me this day to be a patient man. And trust me, God will give you people that you cannot tahan to test your patience, all right? But that's the best way, all right, to learn patience. Or maybe some of you here, you're someone, you hold grudges in today. We say, God, I want to forgive. And God will give you many opportunities to show love, to show forgiveness to this person. And I want to encourage you to act obediently, not out of your feelings. And when you lose it, you blow it, confess it to the Lord again and ask for forgiveness and say, like, Lord, I will do it again. I'll be patient again. I will love again. See, let's make a habit of putting all these new clothes so that we can become more like Christ and less of ourselves. You don't need to wait until you find that perfect guy or girl to show all these qualities. That's being fake, all right? But when you start by today telling God, God, I want to grow in this area, in this season, trust me, as you establish these qualities, you're able to love your future spouse like how Christ loved them. So what are the ABCs of a healthy relationship? Number one, A, appreciate each other's differences. B, become more like Christ. And lastly, C, center it around Christ. See, to become more like Christ is about who you become, right? But to center our relationship around Christ is when we put Christ as a priority, where we seek Him first in the relationship, we seek His purpose first in the relationship, where every decision that you make in this relationship is based on His Word. And because Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, when we place our priority on Him, we will have a healthy relationship. Have you seen this chart before? It's about Christ-centered marriage. So it's a triangle, all right? Below is wife and husband, above is God. See, what is this diagram all about? This diagram shows what it means to center our relationship around Christ. See, when Christ is the focal point at the top, when God is the focal point, when both husband and wife choose to spend time with Him first, seek His purposes first, what happens is it doesn't, it doesn't just strengthen our relationship with God, it strengthens our relationship between one another. It strengthens our relationship between one another. This is because when we go towards God, we are filled with unconditional love, we are filled with unchanging love that becomes the firm foundation for us to love one another. See, without God, we are unable to love sacrificially, unconditionally. And we see the book of Acts 2, when the disciples gather at one place, having one focus to seek God. What happened next in Acts 2 verse 42? They say this, they devoted themselves to apostle teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and signs performed by the apostle. All the believers were together, had everything in common. They sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, ate together with glad and sincere heart, praising God and enjoying the favour of all people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. You see, when we fix our eyes on God, we begin to love one another. We begin to fellowship with one another. We begin to serve one another and include others in. Not just within our cliques, but we include other people in. And this reflects a healthy relationship. Also, when you put Christ a priority, there is a proper order in relationship. You know, I, just, I just happened to see this chart. You see, when we focus on who Christ is, this is an example of a family, all right? What happened is, the husband who's the head of household, what will he do? He will provide protection over the family. He will lead the family. And he will provide for the family. And as wife, we'll give comfort. We'll teach. We'll nurture the child. And as children, we'll love our parents and we we'll obey our parents. You see, when we put Christ as the priority, we fix our eyes on who God is, there's a proper order of relationship. But the moment we mess things up, children become a priority, then everything will go haywire. You understand? Yet often... What causes relationships to become unhealthy, out of order, where there's jealousy, control, abusive, possessiveness over one another, is when our priorities shift from Christ to other things. These things can be self, where we focus everything about ourselves. We become controlling over our relationship with the people, making sure that their attention is on us instead. We become abusive, demanding for their love instead. We ask people to center their life around us instead, seeking attention constantly. I mean, sometimes for parents, it can be their kids. Everything they do is for their kids. They worry a lot for their kids, do a lot for their kids. And when their kids get married, they feel empty. And I know of couples because they focus so much on their kids. They spend so little time between one another. When the kids married off, when they leave the family, 
their relationship became stray because all this while, they have not established proper relationship between one another. I mean, some of us here, we focus a lot on career, on achievement, and this will cause relationship to be distanced. Or maybe we, can, we focus a lot on friends, on boyfriend, or girlfriend, or spouse. They are the only focus in our life. Their only priority in my life are these people that cause us to be very dependent, very reliant on them. Then we become so possessive. This is my friend. Don't touch. Don't talk to her. All right? This is my husband. Don't talk to him. Whatever. We become very possessive over them. All right? Because we are so fearful of losing them. We are so fearful of losing them. You know, I remember when I was second one, I'm not sure I got shared with you all before, right? I was so afraid to lose my primary school good friend because we went to the same school. And I began to see her talking to other friends. I was so afraid. You know what I do? I wrote a letter to her. Please don't do this. It's so stupid, okay? I wrote a letter and say, um, I got cancer. I'm dying. Stupid, right? Very stupid. Why? I want her attention. I want her love. Thank God she never see me after that. I mean, she see I'm still, still alive. There's something wrong, right? <laughs> but you know what? This is what happens when we fix our eyes, not on God, but on other things. We become so possessive over these people. It can be a clique of friends or so. We're so possessive over this group of people that we don't include others. One. Every time we go out, I cannot ask other people out. One. Only all of us can go out. Only, but you don't ask other people because we are one. All right? We are one. Nobody can, can break our relationship. All right? But is this healthy? Is this really healthy? So these qualities or behaviour of being possessive, abusive, controlling unhealthy at all. They're not healthy. But it caused unnecessary expectation. It caused so much fear. And we know in the Bible, in 1 John 14, there is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. A healthy relationship doesn't spark fear, but spark joy. <laughs> this is so important to put Christ the centre. Where as a family, we serve the Lord together. We pray together. As a cell, we reach out together. We welcome new people in our midst. We don't leave them out. As a community, we bless those in need, seeking His plans and His purposes first so that we won't hold relationship with others so tightly that we don't care about others. Sometimes we see, see when you hold relationships so tightly, it's not that you don't care about them, all right? But when you hold it so tightly, they become idols in your life. They become your gods in your life revolving your, li your life around that person, the that friend or that spouse, that it replaces Christ. Some of you may ask, what if my friends are not Christian and my family do not believe in God? Then bring Christ in by reaching out to them, by praying for them. You see, a Christ-centered relationship begins with you living a Christ-centered life. A Christ-centered relationship begins with you living a Christ-centered life where you first be the one to spend time with God, serving Him, seeking Him first, spreading the gospel. And when, you, and when you do that, when you go to any relationship, it's automatic one. that You'll put Him first. You'll encourage people to serve, to seek Him. You'll spur them on towards love and good deeds. You know, there was a season in my life too that I didn't put Christ the center of my relationships. I thought that just by dating a Christian guy, that means I centered it around Christ. Christian, ma, right? Christian Kennedy, right? I was totally wrong. When I was 18 years old, I was together with this guy who was from another church. To me, as long as he go to church, go to cell, good Christian guy, right? But as we progress in our relationship, instead of becoming more godly, instead of serving, reaching out to our family and friends, as back then, our family and friends are not Christian yet, I spent most of my time with him and him alone. To the point that I neglected my time with my friends, my family, and even my studies. That year, I was taking my A-level some more. He became my idol, my God. The breaking point of this relationship came when he went army. You know, when you first go army, how, how many days you cannot see him? Two weeks, right? Wow, that was the worst day of most years of my life. <laughs> Two weeks, cannot see this guy. Oh, I cry like as though he died like that, you know? <laughs> Because every day you see him, right? Suddenly you never see him for two weeks. Wow, oh, very gung ko and I cry. I remember I even called Pastor Mel. No, he go out me. <laughs> it's like, wake up your idea, lah, please. <laughs> and I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah, it's so stupid, but I cry because he, I, every day see him, I was so needy, lah, so needy, okay? To confess, I was needy, all right? And every time he book out, ah, I just want to spend time with him, okay? Super needy girl, all right? Yet this time was also a turning point for my faith in God. 
See, all this while, I've been neglecting God. But because I don't see my ex-boyfriend from Monday to Friday, right? I began to draw closer to God, to my cell group, and started serving more. However, in the midst of the army, in the midst of him going army, he stopped going to church as the issues with his leaders, with the community, and he doesn't want to waste time in church during weekends. I remember there was one time I told him, hey, good to go to church, you know. And then I shared with him how God's been speaking to me and all that. You know what he said? Can you stop telling me about God? You are not my cell leader. Wow, that shocked me. You know, I thought he believed in God, right? But ever since then, I know his faith in God was shaken. I did try to ask him to come to my church. He did for a while, then stopped. He didn't want to believe in God. And when I bring up, any time when I bring up about God, we will often fight. We will often fight. You know, I was very lost because at that point, I know I was fervent for God. But as I look at this relationship that I had, I wasn't sure how God can come into this picture. I kept praying and hoping that He can come back to church. But there wasn't any change. Our conversation becomes so superficial as I couldn't share anything about Christ. And finally, it led me to make a decision to end my three years of relationship because I don't see where this is going. I can't see myself marrying him too. Was it painful? Definitely. And so long never become single. Right? 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 Very kangkho. <laughs> don't have a guy beside me, right? Yeah. But yet, it taught me to center my life around Christ so that I can center my relationship with others around Christ too. Thus, instead of using my time to find boyfriend, as I was single, all right, I used to spend time, I used to use it to spend time with God, with others, serve Him by going to different platforms like TYA, GB. I remember last time Gateway Theatre was involved in Chingay too. I also go and volunteer as a mentor so that I can reach out to the youth and even volunteer myself in camps. Basically, whatever support the church needs, I will volunteer to serve which then opened the door for me to work in church. And I found my calling in life to be a youth pastor. And the place that I found my calling was also the place that I found my husband. And that is Jasper, all right? And trust me, all right? He's the best guy that I can ever have. You know, I've always been praying that, wow, if only I can have a guy that I can share my ministry with, that I can talk with. You know, last night I cannot, right? But, oh, wow, if only I got the guy, wow, I can really have the same passion with me for the youth, how good it is. And true enough, he isn't just a cell leader, but he's also a youth staff. And, and when we get together, we tell ourselves that it must be Christ-centered. It must be Christ-centered. Whereby we will help each other to grow closer to God and tell us we pray together every day and ensure that we got to do our devotion. Also, we'll never forsake our ministry that God has entrusted us, where we'll still serve God's people just like what we did when we are single. We'll never allow our dating time to compromise our serving time. And on top of that, we ensure that we'll be intentional in reaching out to our families because they are not all safe. So every night, we pray for their salvation and we use every opportunity to share Christ. And, through, and ever since we get married, we saw how Jasper's grandma received Christ. And just last week, my sister, who's the last member in the family to be saved, received Christ. And you know, every time I pray for my family, I have a vision of our family worshipping God together as one. And this happened last Thursday, where we gathered together to sing 10,000 Reasons. Praise the Lord, right? Amen? And right now, I'm going to show you Jasper's and I wedding video. Now, this video isn't just about us, okay? Hear this. But it shows the people that we grew up with the people that we serve with, the people that we love, who are all part of this wedding. And all this can only happen when we put Christ the centre of it all. Let's watch this.
one who is standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three is even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Today, as the both of you commit yourself to one another, the both of you together commit yourselves to the Lord, I bless you that you will be this triple braided cord, that your relationship will never be easily broken. Instead, you'll get stronger and stronger each day. You know, I have here with, uh, with me a pair of very expensive ring. It is very small in size, but this ring is very precious and large in significance. Uh, they are made of very precious metal, and they remind us that love is certainly not cheap and common. Indeed, love may cost both of you dearly. Now, it is made in a circle. The design tells us that love must never end. And as you wear this ring, may they be a constant reminder of the promises you are making today. I, Jasper Chia, take you, Charmaine Chong, to be my wedded wife, and I do promise before God and to these witnesses that I'll be your faithful and loving husband in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, until God calls one or both of us into His presence. I, Charmaine Cheong, take you, Jasper Chia, to be my wedded husband. And I do promise before God and these witnesses that I'll be faithful as your submissive wife in plenty and in one, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, until God calls one or both of us into His presence. Amen. Indeed, when you put Christ, the centre of it all, in every relationship, whether it's your family, your friends, your lover, yourself, you'll be one that is lasting and that is healthy. So what are the ABCs of a healthy relationship? Number one, A, appreciate each other's differences. B, become more like Christ. And C, centre it around Christ. You know, honestly, when I see this ABC of a healthy relationship, it's not as easy as ABC. Because we do believe, we do, sorry, we do live in a world that's filled with imperfect people. They may not appreciate us, they may not love the way we want them to love, and sometimes they leave us instead. But the question for all of you here, are we still willing to be set apart, to be different from the world, to love them, because Christ first loved us. First John 4.19 says, We love because He first loved us. We love, we can have healthy relationship. Even if people are not practicing it, we can because He first loved us. And it's true. His love is unconditional, unchanging. He showed out what it means to be sacrificial. And when we choose to follow Him, we are able to do the same too. You know, I believe in a crowd like this. There's some of you here, your first time in our youth service, or your friend has invited you here a few times. And you know the reason why they invite you? It's not to hear me, all right? Because they really want you to experience the greatest love of all, and that is Jesus Christ. They love you, and that's why they want you to experience this. Maybe you've been facing a lot of difficulties in your relationship. You come from families that often fight. Or some of you here, your dad has been saying words that have been hurting towards you. And you just wonder, is there such thing as a healthy relationship? Is there such thing as unconditional love? Because no matter what I do, I don't receive the love from my parents and my friends. 
No matter how much I try to give in, I don't receive it. But Lord says with this, there is an unconditional love, there is an unchanging love who is Jesus Christ. And when you allow Him to come into your life, He will restore not just you, but your entire family and your friends. And all you need to do is to take a step of faith and say, yes, Lord, I want you in my life because I need you. So often, I try my best to be a good daughter, to be a good son. I try my best to be a good friend, but people still betray me. People still talk bad about me. But Lord, this day, will you come and fill my heart with your love? You see, when there's bitterness and there's hurt, we can't love people because there's a lot of resentment in us. But Christ came to this world and go through the worst rejection, the worst judgment ever and to die on the cross for us so that when we receive Him into our life, every hurt and the resentment will be put to death and will be filled with the complete love that no one else can ever give. His love is complete. His love will bring you security. No other people, no one in this world, nothing else can ever fill your heart but only Christ whose love is perfect. So right now, I want to encourage you right now, just close your eyes and bow your head. And that's who you are today. Say, yes, Lord. I may not know much about you, but I want to receive that perfect love. If that's who you are today, all you need to do is to say this prayer. Because our God is a relational God. He hears what we say. And the moment we say this prayer, He will come in. He will draw close to us. That's how much He loves us. He longs to be with us. So if that's who you are today, will you say this prayer? Just repeat after me. And Christians, can you just do the same too to encourage one another? Say, dear Lord Jesus, dear, dear Lord Jesus, I commit my life into your hands. I commit my life into your hands. I believe, I believe that you died on the cross for me. That you died on the cross for me. And you rose again on the third day. And you rose again on the third day. I confess. I confess. There are many times. There are many times that I make mistakes in life. That I've made mistakes in life. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Lord, this day, Lord, this day, come into my life. Come into, come into my, my life. life. I need you, Lord. I need, I need you, Lord. Lord. I need the perfect love that's from you. I need the, the perfect, perfect love that's, that's from you. you. So if that's who you are today, and you say this prayer, yes, Lord, come, Lord, because I need you. I want to receive your love in, this, in my heart. If that's who you are today, and you say this prayer for the very first time. At the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand because by raising your hand, you're telling God, God, here I am. That's me, Lord. Come, Lord. Because I need you. I need you to restore my heart, restore my family. I need you, Lord. So at the count of three, if you say this prayer for the very first time, just raise your hand. One, two, three. That's who you are today. You say that, yes, Lord. I want you in my life. Just raise your hand. Yes, I see your hands. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your love that never fails. Lord, this day come into my brother and my sister's life right now. That they will experience you. That they will know that you are God whose, ever, whose love is everlasting continue to restore their heart and be with them. In Jesus' most precious name, we all pray. Amen. Can we just rise to our feet and give thanks to God? Come on, let's clap as loud as possible to praise Him. Amen. Woo! Now, if you have, you have raised your hand just now, after service, or you can do it now, Right, just follow Pastor Mel. Just go outside. There's a visitor counter there. We have people to speak to you and to bless you with a gift because you are very important to us. We want to bless you with a gift, all right? So friends and leaders, just bring them there outside our Gateway Theatre. But for the rest of us here, I feel the strong presence of God over here. And just say that some of you here, 
you find hard to love because you don't receive love from your family, from your friends. Or some people have said hurtful words in you and, the, and your heart is still scarred. I say, God, why? Why did this like this to me? But the Lord says today, will you just come? Because He wants to restore you. He wants to give you His love that is perfect. See, no one else, not even the girl or guy you love can ever complete your heart, but only the love of Christ. So that's who you are today. You know that you need the love of God in your heart. You know your heart is broken because of things that's happening in this life. The Lord says today, will you come? Because He wants to restore your heart. He wants to fill your heart with His love. And the second group of people is this. You find hard to love because you just don't want to. It's challenging. Indeed, love is challenging. It's never easy, right? But Lord says today, will you be set apart? Say, yes, Lord. I want to love, even when the world doesn't love me, when people say things bad about me, I will still love, I will still show compassion because I want to be sought in light of this world. I don't want to be salty, I don't want to be easily triggered, but I want to love like how you love so that Christ can be seen in me, so that my friends and my family can see Christ in me. If that's who you are today, will you come say, God, yes, Lord, I want to love. Am I standing here? You're making a decision. You're making a commitment. And even though it's hard, you will still love. Even when it's not easy, you will still love. So the altar is open. Will you just come right now as you sing this song? You know, I just sense that some of you here, I do not know if there's... I just sense that some of, someone here you're having an unhealthy relationship with someone that's not Christ-centered at all, and you've been hiding. The Lord says they do not hide. I want to encourage you to share with your leader. Because breakthrough comes when we recognize this and we acknowledge and we allow Christ to come into your life and not hold on to things that doesn't belong to God. That's when breakthrough comes in even your life. So if that's who you are, will you share with your leader? But right now, I want you to gather in your cell group before I say, right? I want you to gather in your cell and I want you to pray as a cell that will be a cell that's healthy. A cell that seeks God's purposes first. A cell that welcomes new people in. A cell that seeks His plans and His ways first. That we will not just be clickish among ourselves, but we'll always seek His purposes and His plan. So right now, I want you to gather in your cell say, God, Teach us what it means to have healthy relationship with one another so that the world will know and the world will see that this is your love. Can we just raise our hands to the Lord right now? If you're still praying, it's okay. For the rest of us here, can we just raise our hand to God? In the 1 John 4, 19 says, We love because He first loved us. Lord, we thank You, Lord, for Your amazing extravagant, your everlasting love. You didn't love us demanding that we love you back. You didn't love us expecting that we love you back. You love because you are, you is, Lord God, you are love, Lord. So I pray this day that all of us here, that we too will love like how you love. We will love unconditionally, we will love sacrificially because like what you have done for us so that the world will know that Christ lives in us. So Lord, we thank you, Lord. We commit our life into your hands. In just most precious name, we all pray. Amen. Amen. So God bless you. We'll see you next week at Suntech, all right, for our last series for our relationship goals. Yeah, thank you.